we pioneered a lot of training in general. So did the other people who were working with, with uh, operant conditioning. We weren't the only ones. That kind of surfaced in two other places too. Um, another graduate student of B.F. Skinner's, uh, Keller Breland, got a consulting job with the Navy and also he had, he had started a business of training animals for television and for practical uses. And some of his trainers worked for um, SeaWorld. So SeaWorld also, when it opened, was the second place to open with operant conditioning as the method of training their animals. Um, and they did, they took it a long way too on their own. They did a lot of innovative training too. Um, we had the, all had the chance to innovate because we were the first ones using operant training consciously. It's been, in, you know, people have been training animals for millennia and using the principles without really knowing it. But a lot of the of standard training techniques, such as using a target to lead the animal around, were, were evolved during that t first 10 year period when the Navy, SeaWorld, and we were all innovating. The first open ocean work, we, we were, it began because of Ken Norris. He wanted to see, the Navy was interested in the fact that these animals seemed to swim too fast, faster than they ought to be able to, and that was deduced for watching them bow ride on ships, which of course is, they're getting a free ride there, they're getting a push. But if you see them in the ocean, you think they're overtaking the, the ship, but really they're usually coming from ahead of the ship and catching the ride that way. Um, however, they certainly are fantastically well designed. Uh, they shed turbulence beautifully, much better than our ships did at the time. So there was an interest in how fast they could swim. And Ken wanted to do an experiment. I think he had Navy funding to do that experiment. It involved doing it in the ocean. You needed that much room. We took, a, we gave him a young, a immature um, Pacific bottlenose named Keiki, which is Hawaiian for child. We set up a training facility in a lagoon, in an in a enclosed, man-made enclosed piece of water on uh, Coconut Island in Kaniwe Bay. And uh, the first release, we took him out of there. I was the trainer, I guess. Um, we took him out of there, Ken and me, and my oldest son and his oldest daughter, who were both t about 11 at the time, maybe 10 or 11. And he came out of there panicked and took off like a madman, the animal. And, but we had, Ken had in, invented, really, uh, using an underwater sound as a beacon to call him back. And he had his underwater sound thing dangling over the side and uh, turned it on and by gosh, the animal came back. Came back shivering with his eyes rolling. Put me in the boat, this is terrible, I'm all alone out here. But uh, then we let him back in and he was fine. And then he soon became confident. And that was the open ocean animal that we worked with offshore. So he was our first, the Navy was also training an animal to go out. And um, I forget that animal's name. They were training for deep diving, I think. Another thing you couldn't do in captivity. And they said they were the first, but their animal was on a tether. And our animal was completely free to leave. So we always thought that the crown belonged to us. Um, we then started doing for Norris uh, some deep diving. And again, we Norris made a sound beacon that you could drop in the water and the animal could go down and touch it. Um, the first one that they built, the Navy built for him, brought up to Sea Life Park and dropped it into the, uh, it dropped it into the Ocean Science Theater where we had a little bit of depth. The animals went panicked. Well, it turned out it made a very loud sound, but too sound high for us to hear. <laughs> Come on, folks. So we had to rebuild it to make a sound that we could hear and that wouldn't panic the dolphin, where you could control the sound a little bit, uh, or at least that the initial sound wasn't, you know, ear splitting, literally. Um, so we took that offshore. We did some open ocean work with that, too. I think these things went along in parallel. That Ken's research grants would all have all those dates. Uh, for me, it was just a lot of fun training the animals.